Hey, Vane Lopes here from Off the Block, and the new college men's volleyball national media poll is out. And I'm a voter for this poll, so let's get down to how I voted. Number one, I have Stanford. The Cardinal started the season on a three-match winning streak, and they have looked impressive in all three matches, including a win this weekend against Lewis, where they had 14 aces. The offense is clicking, the serving is clicking, and the Cardinals are going to be a threat for a national championship this season. Moving down the ballot, number two, I had UCLA. The Bruins got another non-conference victory at the Al Trigger Invitational, winning that tournament for the fourth consecutive season. And I'll tell you, the player who really stood out for me in this tournament is Robert Page. This player is developing into a potential All-American caliber outside. In the three matches at the Al Trigger, had 50-plus combined kills and was named the tournament's most valuable player. He's off to a strong start, as are the Bruins. Then number three, I had Loyola, the Ramblers. They had a bye week after a great start to their season, getting non-conference victories against UC Irvine and BYU. So they had a bye, no punishment for having a bye. They stayed at number three. Now, continuing on the ballot, number four, I had the Trojans. And, you know, all the talk has been about Micah Christensen, and rightfully so. But the player who's really jumped out for me for the Trojans has been Lucas Yoder, the true freshman, once again putting up double-digit kills in a victory for USC in their conference opener against UC San Diego. And he's been the national or the national freshman player of the week now two weeks going. He's looking very good, and the Trojans look to be back. Now, continuing down the ballot, number five, Long Beach State. And this is a team you really thought that they were going to be able to go into Provo, Utah and get a conference victory against BYU. That did not happen. They wound up losing their first loss of the season. Tell you what, though, this is a team that's going to be still really good. Real interested to see, though, what happens with Dalton Ammerman, who had an ankle injury, wasn't able to play in that BYU match. It's going to be very interesting moving forward. Now, moving out of the top five into number six, I have Pepperdine and the Waves really coming out of nowhere after kind of a sluggish preseason against some Canadian teams. They looked very good in their conference openers, getting victories against UC Irvine and getting a victory against UC San Diego. And Josh Taylor has seemed to up his game on the outside. You have a setter like Matt West. This is going to be a team that's going to be very interesting throughout the season. Then number seven, UC Irvine. The Anteaters had a loss on the road against Pepperdine. So they're going, they dropped down in my ballot behind Pepperdine. Now continuing, number eight, I put Lewis. The Flyers, they were able to go out on the West Coast. Basically kind of did what everyone was for the most part expecting, splitting their two-match West Coast road trip. But they were able to get a nice, impressive non-conference victory against against Pacific, and this is going to be a team that's going to continue to be in the top 10, continue to be making a push at a possible NCAA tournament appearance throughout the rest of the season. Now, continuing to round out my ballot, number nine, I had BYU and the Cougars. They look to be back. At least Taylor Sander looks to be back, although he was playing great from the start of the season. But that match against Long Beach State, a signature victory for that team. Taylor Sander, 24 kills in that match. He looked absolutely impressive. And this is a team, especially when they continue to get healthy at that opposite position, they're going to just continue to get better and better this season. Then to close out my battle at number 10, I have Hawaii. The Rainbow Warriors open their season with two victories against Penn State and Ohio State, both on their home court. And I'll say this. It'll be very interesting to see what happens with Hawaii moving forward. But one thing is certain. This is going to be a very difficult team to beat on their home court. This is a team that is able to feed off that crowd, or crowd energy when you have a thousand plus fans in attendance for their home matches. So, so Hawaii, they're going to be very difficult to get at home. I'm very interested to see how this team plays on the road, though, moving forward. So that does it for my top 10. Now be sure for all your college men's volleyball news and analysis to go to offtheblockblog.com.